The House of Valois, French pronunciation, Valois was a cadet branch of the Capetian dynasty. They succeeded the House of Capet or direct Capetians to the French throne, and were the Royal House of France from 1328 to 1589. Junior members of the family founded cadet branches in Orléans, Anjou, Burgundy, and Alencon. The Valois descended from Charles, Count of Valois 1270 the second surviving son of King Philip III of France reigned 1270 Their title to the throne was based on a precedent in 1316 later retroactively attributed to the Merovingian Salic Law which excluded females Joan II of Navarre, as well as male descendants through the Distaff line Edward III of England, from the succession to the French throne. After holding the throne for several centuries the Valois male line failed and the House of Bourbon succeeded the Valois to the throne as the senior surviving branch of the Capetian dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> Unexpected inheritance The Capetian dynasty seemed secure both during and after the reign of Philip IV from 1285 to 1313. Philip had left three surviving sons Louis, Philip and Charles and a daughter Isabella. Each son became king in turn but died young without male heirs, leaving only daughters who could not inherit the throne. When Charles IV died in 1328, the French succession became more problematic. In 1328 three candidates had plausible claims to the throne. Philip, Count of Valois, son of Charles of Valois, who was the closest heir in male line and a grandson of Philip III. Because his father was the brother of the late Philip IV, he was therefore a nephew of Philip IV and the cousin of Louis X, Philip V and Charles IV. Further, Charles IV had chosen him as the regent before his death. Joan of Navarre, daughter of Louis X Although Philip V had used his position relative to his niece to take the throne in 1316, Joan nevertheless had a strong claim as the heir general of Philip IV and had been initially supported by her maternal family upon the death of Louis X she ultimately received the Kingdom of Navarre, which could pass to and through females. Edward III of England, son of Isabella of France, daughter and only surviving child of Philip IV. Edward claimed to be the heir as a grandson of Philip IV. In England, Isabella of France claimed the throne on behalf of her son. Like the French, the English law of succession did not allow the succession of females, but allowed the succession through the female line, as exemplified by Henry II of England. The French rejected Isabella's claims, arguing that since she herself, as a woman, could not succeed, then she could not transmit any such right to her son. Thus the French magnates chose Philip of Valois, who became Philip VI of France. The throne of Navarre went its separate way, to Joan of France, daughter of Louis X, who became Joan II of Navarre. Because diplomacy and negotiation had failed, Edward III would have to back his claims with force to obtain the French throne. For a few years, England and France maintained an uneasy peace. Eventually, an escalation of conflict between the two kings led to the confiscation of the Duchy of Aquitaine 1337. Instead of paying homage to the French king, as his ancestors had done, Edward claimed that he was the rightful king of France. These events helped launch the Hundred Years' War 1337 between England and France. Though England failed to win that prolonged conflict, English and British monarchs until the late 18th century continued to maintain, at least formally, a claim to the French throne. <laughs> Hundred Years' War The Hundred Years' War could be considered a lengthy war of succession between the houses of Valois and Plantagenet. The early reign of Philip VI was a promising one for France. The new king fought the Flemings on behalf of his vassal, the Count of Flanders, and restored that count to power. Edward III's aggression against Scotland, a French ally, prompted Philip VI to confiscate Guyenne. In the past the English kings would have to submit to the King of France. But Edward, having descended from the French kings, claimed the throne for himself. France was then at the height of its power. No one believed that the English king could make good his claim to France. Edward's initial strategy was to ally with Flanders and the princes of the empire. The alliances were costly and not very productive. While on a truce the French and English kings intervened in the War of the Breton Succession. In 1346, Edward invaded France and pillaged the countryside rather than attempt to hold territory. 
French forces led by Philip VI confronted Edward III at the Battle of Crecy, which resulted in a devastating and humiliating defeat for the French. Despite this, the most that Edward could make out of his victory was the capture of Calais. John II succeeded his father Philip VI in 1350. He was menaced by Charles II of Navarre, of the Evreux branch of the Capetian family, who aspired to the French throne by the right of his mother, the senior descendant of Philip IV of France. Charles's character eventually alienated both the French and English monarchs, because he readily switched sides whenever it suited his interest. In 1356, Edward, the Black Prince, eldest son and heir of Edward III, led an army to a chevauche in France. John pursued the Black Prince, who tried to avoid battling the French king's superior force. Negotiations broke down. In the Battle of Poitiers, the French suffered another humiliating defeat, and their king was captured. Edward hoped to capitalize on the victory by invading France and having himself crowned at Reims. But the new leader, the Dauphin Charles, avoided another pitched battle, and the city of Reims withstood siege. In the Treaty of Bretigny, the English king gained an enlarged Aquitaine in full sovereignty, gave up the Duchy of Touraine, the counties of Anjou and Maine, the suzerainty of Brittany and of Flanders, and his claim to the French throne. Charles V became king in 1364. He supported Henry of Trastamara in the Castilian Civil War, while the Black Prince supported the reigning king, Peter of Castile. The Black Prince won, but Peter refused to pay for his expenses. The Black Prince tried to recover his losses by raising taxes in Aquitaine, which prompted them to appeal to the King of France. War was renewed. The French recovered their territories place after place. When Charles died in 1380, only Calais, Bordeaux and Bayonne were left to the English. The ancient, great families of the feudal nobility had largely been replaced by an equally powerful class—the princes of the royal blood. With the confiscation of Guyenne, the only remaining non-Capetian peer was the Count of Flanders. The Montfort Dukes of Brittany, the Houses of Evreux and Bourbon, and the Princes of the House of Valois, constituted the great nobility of the kingdom. Succeeding to the throne at the age of 11, the reign of Charles VI of France was the first minority since that of St. Louis's in 1226. Power devolved into the hands of his uncles, the Dukes of Anjou, Berry and Burgundy. The dukes squandered the resources of the monarchy to pursue their own ends. Anjou pursued his claim in the Kingdom of Naples, Berry governed his large estates in Languedoc, and Burgundy, having married the heiress of Flanders, found it more convenient to rule his vast dominions from Paris. Charles terminated his uncle's regency at the age of 21, even though he would have been entitled to it as early as the age of 14. His early reign was promising, but the onset of madness, which he may have inherited from the Bourbon dukes through his mother, would prove to be disastrous for France. Burgundy, the most powerful of the princes and peers, naturally took power in his hands. But his nephew, Louis I, Duke of Orléans, the king's brother, contested his authority. Rivalry between the two princes and their descendants led to the armagnac burgundian Civil War. In 1415 Henry V of England, great-grandson of Edward III, invaded France. In the Battle of Agincourt, the Armagnac faction fought the English and were decimated. The Dukes of Orléans and Bourbon were captured, and the Burgundian party gained ascendancy in Paris. Henry proceeded to conquer Normandy. The Armagnacs assassinated John the Fearless, Duke of Burgundy, a belated revenge for the assassination of Louis I, Duke of Orléans. The new duke, Philip the Good, allied himself with the English. In the Treaty of Troyes, Henry V of England became regent of France and heir to that throne. He also married Catherine of Valois, the French king's daughter. The Dauphin Charles was effectively disinherited. To assume a greater appearance of legality, it was ratified by the Estates General later that year. To accept the Treaty of Troyes would be a denial of the legitimacy of the Valois. While England was accustomed to change her kings, the French largely adhered to theirs. The treaty was recognized only in English-controlled territories in northern France, and by the allied dukes of Burgundy and Brittany. Henry V died before his sickly father-in-law, Charles VI, leaving the future of the Lancastrian Kingdom of France in the hands of his infant son Henry VI of England, and his brother, John, Duke of Bedford. The able leadership of Bedford prevented Charles VII from retaking control of northern France. In 1429, Joan of Arc successfully raised the Siege of Orléans and had the king crowned at Reims, an important French propaganda victory. 
Power struggles between Bedford, his brother Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester, and their uncle Cardinal Beaufort hampered the English war effort. The Duke of Burgundy, alienated by the blunders of Gloucester, reconciled with the King of France in the Treaty of Arras, 1435. Bedford had died that same year. The warring parties arranged long truces, during which the French king prepared for the renewal of war, while the English relaxed and took a break from fresh taxes. By 1450, the French had reconquered Normandy, and Guyenne the next year. A final English attempt to recover their losses ended in defeat at the Battle of Castellon, 1453. With this victory, the English had been expelled in all of France except Calais. The Valois succession was upheld and confirmed. <laughs> Centralization of power With the expulsion of the English, Charles VII had re-established his kingdom as the foremost power of Western Europe. He created France's first standing army since Roman times, and limited papal power in the Gallican Church by the pragmatic sanction of Borges. But his later years were marred by quarrels with his eldest son and heir, the Dauphin Louis, who refused to obey him. The Dauphin was banished from court for his intrigues, and did not return to France until his father's death. Louis XI succeeded his father in 1461. At the beginning of his reign Louis reversed his father's policies, abolishing the pragmatic sanction to please the Pope and the standing armies, which he distrusted, in favor of Swiss mercenaries. As a prince he had leagued with the nobility against his father, but as a king he found that his power could only be maintained by subduing them. He was the lifelong enemy of Charles the Bold, Count of Charolais, and later Duke of Burgundy. In 1465 the League of the Public Wheel, an alliance of the feudal princes, which consisted of Charles, Duke of Berry, the King's brother, the Count of Charolais, the Dukes of Brittany, Bourbon, Lorraine then a member of the House of Anjou, and several others, attempted to restore their feudal prerogatives. Louis feared a further escalation of the conflict against this formidable coalition. To obtain peace he conceded all their demands, including the Duchy of Normandy to his brother, which carried with it one-third of the offices of state. Louis seldom relied on the fortunes of war, but on intrigue and diplomacy. He maintained his power by paying pensions to well-placed people in the courts of his vassals and in neighboring states. He retook Normandy from his brother at the first opportunity. He bought off Edward IV of England to desist from attacking France. He fomented rebellions in the Burgundian dominions. At the death of Charles the Bold in 1477, he seized the Duchy of Burgundy, which he claimed as a reverted fief, even though the original grant did not specify the exclusion of female heirs. But the marriage of Mary of Burgundy, heiress of Charles the Bold, to Maximilian of Austria, would prove problematic for later generations. In 1481, the last male of the House of Anjou died, willing all the Angevin possessions to the king. At the end of his reign royal power had become absolute in France. Italian wars Charles VIII succeeded his father in 1483, at the age of 13. During his minority the nobles again attempted to seize power, but they were defeated by Charles's sister Anne of France. Charles's marriage to Anne of Brittany prevented a future total Habsburg encirclement of France. As the heir of the House of Anjou, Charles VIII decided to press his claim to the Kingdom of Naples. It was the beginning of the Italian Wars. In September 1494 Charles invaded Italy with 25,000 men, and attained his object by of February 1495, virtually unopposed. But the speed and power of the French advance frightened the powers of Italy. The League of Venice, which consisted of the republics of Venice and Florence, the duchies of Milan and Mantua, the kings of Spain and Naples, the emperor and the pope, united against the French. Charles, who did not wish to be trapped in Naples, had to fight against them in the Battle of Fornovo. Charles succeeded in returning to France, but all his conquests and booty were lost. The debts he incurred for the campaign prevented him from resuming the war, and he died in an accident in 1498. With his death the senior line of the House of Valois became extinct. He was succeeded by his cousin, the Duke of Orleans, who became Louis XII of France, Louis XII married his predecessor's widow, Anne of Brittany, in order to retain that province for France. The new king also continued his predecessor's policy in Italy. The Dukes of Orleans were descended from Valentina Visconti, and through her claimed the Duchy of Milan. 
From 1499 to 1512, excepting a brief period in 1500, Louis XII was Duke of Milan. French military activity continued in Italy, with various leagues formed to counter the dominant power. Louis died without a son, and was succeeded by his cousin and son-in-law, Francis of Angoulême, who became Francis I of France in 1515. Francis I belonged to a cadet branch of the House of Orleans. In the Battle of Marignano, Francis defeated the Swiss, who had ousted his predecessor from Milan, and took control of the duchy. In the imperial election of 1519, the kings of Spain, France, and England fought for the imperial title. The king of Spain was a grandson of the deceased emperor, but the electors thought him to be a foreigner as much as the French king. The kings resorted to bribes, and the Spanish king became Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor. The election of the Spanish king to the imperial throne made him the first monarch in Europe, both in title and in reality. Annoyed, the French king demanded that the emperor pay homage for Flanders and Artois, the emperor responded by reasserting his claim to the Duchy of Burgundy. The rivalry of the French royal house with the Habsburgs dominated the rest of the 16th century. The emperor took Milan from the French in 1521. The king of England and the pope supported the emperor. France was surrounded by enemies on all sides. Domestic troubles led to the defection of Charles III, Duke of Bourbon and Constable of France, to the Emperor. In 1525, at the Battle of Pavia, the French were defeated and the king himself was captured. Francis obtained his release through the Treaty of Madrid, in which he renounced claims in Naples and Milan, surrendered Burgundy to Spain, abandoned sovereignty over Flanders and Artois, and gave up two of his sons as hostages. Francis repudiated the treaty. Having often found himself alone in his struggle against the emperor, Francis formed the Franco-Ottoman alliance with the Sultan, to the scandal of Christian Europe. Francis supported the conversion of the German princes to Protestantism, as it increased his potential allies against the emperor. In his own dominions, the Protestants were suppressed. Henry II succeeded to the throne in 1547. He continued his father's policies, as did his successors. He persecuted Protestants in his kingdom, while Protestants abroad were his allies. Henry captured the three bishoprics of Metz, Toul, and Verdun. French offensives failed in Italy. In 1556, Charles V abdicated, splitting the Habsburg dominions between his son, Philip II of Spain, who gained Spain and the Low Countries, and his brother Ferdinand I, who became emperor. The French retook Calais after England allied with Spain. The Peace of Coteau Cambrésis 1559 ended the Italian wars. The French lost all their Italian territories except Saluzzo, and were confirmed in the possession of Calais and the three bishoprics. It was a diplomatic victory for Philip II, who gave up nothing which belonged to himself. The Spanish king retained Francia Comte and was confirmed in his possession of Milan, Naples, Sicily, Sardinia, and the state of Presidi, making him the most powerful ruler in Italy. French wars of religion The last phase of Valois rule in France was marked by the French wars of religion. Henry II died in a jousting accident in 1559. His eldest son and heir, Francis II, succeeded him. The new king was already King of Scotland by right of his wife, Mary, Queen of Scots. The Queen's maternal relatives, the House of Guise, gained an ascendancy over the young king. The House of Guise was a cadet branch of the Ducal House of Lorraine. They claimed descent from Charlemagne and had designs on the French throne. They considered the House of Bourbon, princes of the blood, as their natural enemies. The leading Bourbons, the brothers Antoine, King of Navarre, and Louis, Prince of Condé, were Protestants. The House of Guise identified themselves as champions of the Catholic cause. They were on the point of executing Condé when the young king died. With the succession of her minor son Charles IX in 1560, Catherine de' Medici maneuvered for a balance of power. She released Condé, hoping to use the Bourbons as a counterweight against the Guises. Antoine of Navarre converted to Catholicism and became lieutenant general of the kingdom. The massacre of Vassy sparked the first religious war between the Catholics and the Huguenots. Navarre and Guise died in this war. Anne de Montmorency, Constable of France, was the notable casualty of the Second War. Condé died in the Third War. The Huguenots were unable to win a substantive victory, but were able to keep an army in the field. 
Henry, King of Navarre, married Margaret of France, sister of Charles IX, in 1572. The marriage, which had been expected to reconcile the Protestants and Catholics, proved to be a disappointment. The Saint Bartholomew's Day Massacre ensued, the Huguenots who flocked in Paris for the wedding were massacred en masse. Navarre and Condé were spared, forced to convert, and detained. The guilt of having permitted the massacre would haunt Charles for the rest of his life. In 1573, the king's brother, Henry, Duke of Anjou, was elected King of Poland. In 1574, only three months after Henry's coronation as King of Poland, he succeeded to the French throne as Henry III. The next year the king's only remaining brother, the Duke of Alencon, fled the court and joined with Condé and Navarre. This combined threat forced the new king to grant the demands of the rebels. Alencon was made Duke of Anjou. The concessions to the Huguenots disquieted the Catholics, who formed the Catholic League. The League was led by the princes of the House of Lorraine. The Dukes of Guise, Mayen, Amalé, Elbeuf, Merker and Lorraine, supported by Spain. The Huguenots held the southwest and were allied to England and the princes of Germany. The death of the king's brother, in 1584, meant that the Huguenot king of Navarre had become heir presumptive to the throne of France. Pressured by the Catholic League, the king issued the Treaty of Namur, which outlawed Protestantism and made Protestants incapable of holding royal office. In the resulting War of the Three Henrys, the Royalists led by the King, the Huguenots led by Henry of Navarre, and the Catholic League led by Henry of Guise, fought a three-way contest for the control of France. After the humiliation of the Day of the Barricades, Henry III fled from Paris. Guise had entered Paris against his express prohibition, he resolved to assassinate the audacious Duke. The assassination of Guise drew the odium of the Catholic League. Henry III sought the alliance of Navarre. The two kings were on the point of taking Paris with their great army, when the French king fell by the hands of an assassin. With his death the male line of the House of Valois had been completely extinguished, after reigning for 261 years in France. Succession The royal Bourbons originated in 1272, when the youngest son of King Louis IX married the heiress of the Lordship of Bourbon. The house continued for three centuries as a cadet branch, serving as nobles under the direct Capetian and Valois kings. In 1589, at the death of Henry III of France, the House of Valois became extinct in the male line. Under the Salic law, the head of the House of Bourbon, as the senior representative of the senior surviving branch of the Capetian dynasty, became King of France as Henry IV. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> List of Valois kings of France. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Valois direct. Philip VI, the fortunate 1328–1350, son of Charles of Valois John II, the good 1350–1364 Charles V, the wise 1364–1380 Charles VI, the well-beloved, later known as the mad 1380–1422 Charles VII, the victorious or the well-served 1422–1461 Louis XI, the prudent 1461–1483 Charles VIII, the affable 1483–1498 Valois Orléans Louis XII, the father of the people 1498–1515, great-grandson of Charles V of France Topic. Valois Angoulême Francis I 1515–1547, great-great-grandson of Charles V of France Henry II 1547–1559 Francis II 1559–1560 Charles IX 1560–1574 Henry III 1574 1589 The application of the Salic law meant that with the extinction of the Valois in the male line, the Bourbons succeeded to the throne as descendants of Louis IX. <laughs> Valois King of Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth 
Henry III of France 1573–1574 Other significant titles held by the House of Valois Counts and Dukes of Alencon House of Valois Alencon Charles II, Count 1325 1346, second son of Charles of Valois Charles III, Count 1346 1361 Peter II, Count 1361 1391 John I, Count 1391 1414 John the First, Duke, fourteen fourteen to fourteen fifteen. John the Second, Duke, fourteen fifteen to fourteen twenty four and fourteen forty nine to fourteen seventy four. Rene I, Duke, fourteen seventy eight to fourteen ninety two. Charles the Fourth, Duke, fourteen ninety two to fifteen twenty five. Topic Counts and Dukes of Anjou. House of Valois Anjou Louis I, Duke 1360-1383 also King of Jerusalem and Naples as Louis I, second son of John II of France Louis II 1377 son of also King of Naples as Louis II Louis III 1403 son of also King of Naples as Louis III Rene I, 1409 to 1480, brother of also King of Jerusalem and Naples as Rene I. Charles IV, 1436 to 1481. Topic: Dukes of Burgundy. House of Valois Burgundy. Philip II the Bold, 1363 to 1404, fourth son of John II of France. John II the Fearless 1404 to 1419 Philip III the Good 1419 to 1467 Charles I the Bold 1467 to 1477 Mary I the Rich 1477 to 1482 Topic Dukes of Brabant House of Valois Burgundy Brabant Anthony the 1st 1406 to 1415 second son of Philip the Bold of Burgundy John the 4th 1415 to 1427 Philip the 1st 1427 to 1430 topic counts of nevers house of valois burgundy nevers Philip II, 1404 to 1415, third son of Philip the Bold of Burgundy. Charles I, 1415 to 1464. John II, 1464 to 1491. Topic: <laughs> Dukes of Orléans. House of Valois Orléans. Louis I, Duke of Orléans, 1372 to 1407, younger son of Charles V of France. Charles, Duke of Orléans, 1394 to 1465. Louis II, Duke of Orléans, 1462 to 1515, later also King of France as Louis XII. Topic: <laughs> Counts of Angoulême. House of Valois Orléans Angoulême John, Count of Angoulême 1399-1467, a younger son of Louis I, Duke of Orléans Charles, Count of Angoulême 1459-1496 Francis, Count of Angoulême 1494-1547, later also King of France as Francis I Illegitimate branches House of Valois Dunois, Counts of Longueville, see Jean de Dunois, descended from a son of Louis I, Duke of Orleans. House of Valois Saint Remy, Counts of Saint Remy, see Jean of Valois Saint Remy, descended from a son of Henry II of France. Topic: <laughs> Forms of address. 
Forms of address for Valois kings and princes included, Most Christian Majesty, Dauphin, Your Grace, Your Majesty, Most Regal Majesty. See also Ancient regime French monarch's family tree Valois tapestries <laughs>